teaching? What are we teaching? We can barely get along sometime in the meetings today. Imagine if we all had the same anything. So diversity is a good thing in the church. It's a very good thing. We should embrace the differences that we have in each other. Not just the way we look. I'm talking about in our characters. Because as we develop the character of Jesus, even though we all might sound different, even though we all might have different characters, our characters should blend in the same way. Because we all have the same goal. And nobody's more important than somebody else. No matter what your gift is. If you don't know what your spiritual gift is, you should be praying and asking God to reveal it to you. Because everybody has a gift. There's two or three places in the Bible that talks about spiritual gifts. One of them is in Ephesians. You should know what your spiritual gift is. Because everybody should be participating in the ministry. If you're participating in the ministry, your gift will become very clear. If you're sitting at home every week, you just come to church once a week and that's it for you, then of course you don't know what your spiritual gift is. You're not using it. You don't need it. Now, I'm not beating anybody up. I'm just letting you know that this is a positive thing. This is a good thing. See, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And if the joy of the Lord is your strength, we should be happy. Our greatest joy should be serving God. And you're serving God when you're serving each other. When we can love each other the way God loves. And the way God loves, there's no judgment in it. Because if Jesus Christ came to die on the cross for all our sins, then what difference can I have with my brother or my sister? They're sinners. That does not mean we don't call sin by his rightful name. It means that you're forgiven in my eyes because you're forgiven in his. And it's through Jesus that we should look at each other, that we should treat each other, that we should talk to each other. We got to see it through his eyes. And through his eyes, you're not a sinner. You're a forgiven sinner. Does that make sense? So let's go back to the spirit of prophecy. In the Bible, in the book of Revelation, it has the three angels' message. This is another division in the church. Some people are not embracing the three angels' message. We're calling it something else. We're not preaching and teaching the three angels' message. If we're not preaching and teaching the three angels' message, then the spirit of prophecy is a bother. It's something we need to avoid. But the Bible says watch as well as what? As well as pray. We're praying that our faith fail not. But what are we watching for? We're watching for a sign of the time. How do we know what the sign of the times are if we don't know about the prophecy? You won't know. And the Bible says that anyone can be deceived. There is no one exempt that can not be deceived if you are not grounded in the Word of God. You can and you will be deceived. So that means we should be embracing the three angels' message. We should be embracing the spirit of prophecy along with our study of the Word of God. See, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. Working man. What is a working man? What are you working? Does that mean you go out and have a job? That means we're involved in the ministry. Then it says, which means not being ashamed. Who's ashamed of the gospel? Who's ashamed to let somebody know that you love God? Who's ashamed to tell someone you're an Adventist? Who's ashamed to tell someone you embrace the spirit of prophecy? You'll be surprised at how many churches don't even mention the word prophecy in their sermons. They don't mention it. How can you have an end time message and not include the spirit of prophecy? It's not possible. You're not telling the truth. And then for those of us that receive it, but do not receive it in our hearts, are despising it. Because when you leave out the doors, not one word of prophecy leaves your lips. That's not good. See, in the unity of faith, we ought to be on one accord. And being on one accord means that we embrace the spirit of prophecy. 
in this church. We embrace the testimony of Jesus in this church. We are on one accord with the three angels' message in this church. If we are not, someone needs to have somebody else up here. Because I must have missed something. I love every one of you. But every one of you, I love you as my brother or my sister. But the Bible is very clear. Those that do not embrace the spirit of prophecy, we need to help. See, the Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of what? A lack of knowledge. Don't be mad at your brother because he don't understand it. Help him. Don't argue with your sister because she doesn't embrace it. Help her. Because this is why it's a joy. I'll tell you something else. I couldn't wait to come here and talk about the spirit of prophecy. I was so excited about doing this. You know why? Has anybody figured out why? Why am I so I mean, I've got there are many things I can preach about. But I'd rather preach about the spirit of prophecy than almost anything else. Does anybody know why? Because in the spirit of prophecy, and it's a secret about the spirit of prophecy, it declares the end from the beginning. I know where we're going. You know? I don't have to worry about the day-to-day -day life of what's happening. I don't have to worry about what's not in my bank account or where we didn't go on vacation this year. I don't have to worry about the pain in my back or my sore leg or that my neighbor don't really like me. I don't have to worry about that. I don't even have to worry about the person who sits next to me in the church and don't have and despises me. Some of y'all sit next to people you don't even like. I don't have to worry about that because I know where we're going. Where are we going? When Jesus Christ comes back to this earth, what is he coming back for? He's not coming back for anger and frustration. He's not coming back for pain and suffering. What is he coming back for? He's coming back for the church. And who's the church? We are the church. If we're the church, then that's what he's coming back for. And if that does not make you happy, if that does not bring your heart joy, something is wrong here. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And if you think about where we're going, it doesn't matter where you've been. We need to focus on where we're going. The Bible is clear that when he comes back, we need to be, the Bible says we need to watch as well as pray. He says, I'll come back quickly. Do you know why he says he comes back quickly? Because the Bible says if he delays, not one of us would survive. Physically. We wouldn't survive. So the temptations that are coming into the church, the deception that's coming into the church, the disruption that's coming into the church, we need to rebuke. Because we need to be on one accord with what we believe. We need to know and embrace the spirit of prophecy. We don't need to run from it. We don't need to lie about it. We don't need to act like it's something else. We don't need to diminish it down to just one person. We need to embrace the spirit of prophecy. I will teach more on the spirit of prophecy in more sermons. Because there are some other things that I'm going to get to that the church is divided on in the spirit of prophecy. We are divided on it. And we need to be on one accord. Does that make sense? Amen. Now let me ask you this. The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Amen. And according to the Bible, when Jesus Christ comes back, he's coming back for the church. He's coming back for a church that have the commandments of God and that have the faith of Jesus. And I just said, the faith of Jesus is when he imparts in you his spirit. And one other reason why it's so important, so important, that we understand what the faith of Jesus is when it's imparted into you is when he call your name, are you going to hear it? Because according to the Bible, there's two resurrections. You're either going to be resurrected to life or resurrected to judgment. The difference between you hearing God's voice, if you know him now, you'll hear him then. If you do not know him now, you're not going to hear him then. 
<laughs> we need to know his voice. You need to know. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice. Do you know the voice of God? If God communicated to you, I just said that the spirit of prophecy was a gift to the church. It wasn't a gift to one person. It was a gift to the church. And if it was a gift to the church, if God communicated with you today, would you know his voice? Would you be able to discern that it is God who is communicating with you? Because trust me, Satan is communicating with you. He's communicating with you before you leave this building. He'll be communicating with you. And if you don't know what to rebuke, then you would adhere to anybody. And we don't want anybody led astray. So we want you to know God's voice. To know his voice is to know his character. And the development of his character is in his word. So this is what we should be preaching. This is what we should be teaching. This is how we should be living. Not in judgment one to the other, but in love one to the other. Because if you love somebody enough, if you love God enough, you will see his character in everything he created. Does that make sense? I want to close this with prayer. Father, I just thank you for this opportunity to talk about a subject that so many are still confused about. It is our prayer that we have enlightened someone here today by the spirit of prophecy Allow each and every person here to leave uh, with a little more knowledge, but with a lot more joy of everything that you've done when you sent your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our, all of our sins. <laughs> it is our prayer and it is our hope that we embrace the spirit of prophecy and learn to apply it to the scriptures that we may be sure and rest assured in our in our faith. In Jesus' name, let's pray to give thanks. Amen. Amen. Amen.